In high school geometry, the expectation is for students to both explain volume formulas and use them to solve problems. This expectation is built on a foundation of student spatial understanding of the relationship between two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects. To go beyond plugging values into a formula, teachers should consider using hands-on materials, non-routine tasks, and open-ended questioning to address standards G, M, D, 3, and 4 completely. G, M, D, 3 use volume formulas for cylinders, pyramids, cones, and spheres to solve problems. And G, G, M, D, 4 identify the shapes of two-dimensional cross-sections of three-dimensional objects and identify three-dimensional objects generated by rotations of two-dimensional objects will be addressed in this video. In elementary school, students begin exploring rectilinear area and the connection between multiplication and area. The area of a rectangle is the starting point for developing the area formulas of other polygons in middle school. In much the same way, the formula for volume of a rectangular prism, which begins in fifth grade, is the starting point for developing the volume formulas for other 3D figures. In middle school, seventh grade students also describe plane figures as 2D figures that result from slicing 3D figures and find volume of any prism that may be partitioned into triangles and rectangles. Additionally, students explore circle measurement and this becomes the starting point for developing volume formulas of cones, cylinders, and spheres in eighth grade. In high school, students examine geometric measurement more closely, giving informal arguments to explain formulas used in earlier grades. These arguments draw on visualizing the relationship between 2D and 3D figures. Students then apply these geometric concepts to model situations. You've just watched Act 1 of the three-act task, You Pour, I Choose. Was your curiosity piqued? This three-act task is a great hook into the study of volume and solid figures in high school geometry. It's both engaging and an opportunity for teachers to assess students' prior knowledge. Act 1 begins with a video and is driven by two questions. What do you notice and what do you wonder? first glass is tall and thin and the second glass is wide and small but they're poor at the almost exact same time. Okay, what do y'all wonder? If they have the same amount of soda in each one. Cool. They look like equal to me because in the shorter glass, it looks like it's about halfway, but the width of the shorter glass looks like twice as big as the skinny glass. Once students have come to consensus on the question to answer and made an estimated guess, Act 2 is where students gather information to help them model the context and find a solution to their question. Uh, height of the, cup, uh, the height of the cups or the height of the liquid uh, and also the um, area of the, of the diam radius. The area of the cup's width and length. What was Levi describing we needed? The volume. The volume. And well, I, mean, I, I don't have the volume for you. Of the cup space yeah, the times the height the of the cup. The area of the cup space. Or the area of the liquid space diameter. times the volume. I mean, times the height of the. Okay. We the if we could just find the diameter, then we'd be good. Diameter of what? The diameter of the cup of the base. Act three is the reveal. In this case, students' predictions differed from the conclusion. This provided a great opportunity to dig into why and develop the mathematics vocabulary needed to dive deeper into these standards. What was y'all's um, hypothesis about the diameters before I gave them to you? The diameter of the one on the left is not half that of the diameter of the one on the right. right. That was kind of what y'all were basing your prediction on, prediction on right? Yeah. And it turns out that it's not half. To begin making the connection between 2D and 3D shapes and using these relationships to apply volume formulas to solve problems, slices or cross-sections of solids can be explored with hands-on materials such as potter's clay and potter's wire or by filling a solid partially with water. The surface of the water simulates a slice. Okay, so the cross section right here would be a circle and if you tilted it, it would be a triangle. 
How would you find the um, area of that cross section, that triangle cross section? Um, well, it'd just be the diameter of the bottom of the cone. The yeah. diameter would be what part of the triangle? The um, base of the triangle. Okay. And then the height that you would use would be the height of the cone. In addition, online applets like Cross Section Flyer from Schroeder Interactivate support students' development of spatial mathematics in order to identify cross sections and dimensions needed to solve non-routine or composite volume problems. The state framework tasks, volumes of cylinders, cones, pyramids, and spheres, and the formative assessment lesson, calculating volume of compound objects. Both are tasks that promote reasoning by focusing on the use of procedural volume formulas while developing deeper level of understanding of shapes and the dimensions needed to use these formulas. Although general procedures of using the volume formulas may be followed, students need to visualize the relationship between 2D and 3D shapes in order to complete this task successfully. Okay, so it says 12 inches is a measurement right here. So this would be 12 inches, and the radius would be 6. And so this is half a circle, so this would also be 6 right here. Because if you were to make a full circle, the diameter would be 12. Yeah, you so divided by 2. I this see. is the radius, so this would be 6. All right, I got you. So how did you determine the height of the prism? You just subtract 17 minus 6 equals 11. So for the rectangle, we're going to... What is that, guys? Is it a rectangle? A re no, a rectangle a prism. prism. And for the rectangle prism, we're going to plug into the formula, which is equal to the first, the first answer. Okay. And then after that, what's he going to do next? What's he going to do next? Multiply them all together. Okay. And the, so for the prism, but what's the other shape? Uh, it's a half cylinder. circle. Or, yeah, half cylinder. It's pi c squared times the height. And then, um, oh yeah, what is the height, guys? It's four. A, Where did four come from? This side length right here. Do you agree? Is it four? Yeah. So you don't put that all together. Oh, do I, where's I four? Where's the height at on that picture for me? Uh, it's right here. This is my four. Okay, so, that helps. The pre-assessment and post-assessment for the FAL Calculating Volume of Compound Objects glasses also includes tasks that involve composite volume of cylinders, cones, and spheres. Additionally, it provides an opportunity to make the connection between cross-sections of three-dimensional shapes and using these cross-sections to find needed measurements. Um, I don't think Logan has the correct answer. I mean, as far as up to right here to this point is good. But when he gets a B squared equals 40, he didn't square root it. So it's supposed to be the square root of 40, not just 40 by itself, because that would be just B squared, and he didn't simplify the answer. Oh, okay. So why was he doing the Pythagorean theorem? He did the Pythagorean theorem because he had this side, but this wasn't the fully side of what he wanted. He didn't want this extra piece. He just wanted this part. So he had to find out what he the height was. Yeah. When the height? He wanted yes. to find the height of the diagonal. Okay, so how did he figure out, why did he decide to use Pythagorean theorem to find the height? Because he had one side and he had a slanted side, but he needed a full height of a one side. How did he know to use that? Because with the Pythagorean theorem, you use it when you have a missing side of a right triangle, and you can use that in this situation. When you use, if you do a perpendicular cross section, you can see that there's a right triangle right here. To help students visualize and identify the three-dimensional objects generated by rotations of two-dimensional objects, these students simulated the rotation with shapes in wet sand and by rotating shapes on the ends of pencils. Once the shape was determined, they were asked to find the volume of these shapes connecting both standards. Okay, so if you look at the triangle like this, it's the same as this. So the 5 is going to be the base down here, and the side is going to be this 12. So when we spin it, that's when we realize what shape it is. It makes a cone shape. Yes. With the bottom part when we spin it. <laughs> So with that, we're going to, since we know it's a cone, we can use the cone formula to figure out what 
to figure out what the volume is of the triangle. Or so the cone. one third power squared. Then you plug it in. The task and resources found in this video are linked below. Additional resources may be found at georgiastandards.org.